delighted to introduce Jamil Qureshi. Um, now, Jamil is one of our foremost practitioners when it comes to performance enhancing psychology. He was uh, one of an elite band of external psychologists who were invited in to study astronauts as part of the NASA space program, which I can only imagine must have been such an incredible experience to be a part of. And he has worked with businesses of all sizes to try and really tap into fulfilling their potential uh, by orchestrating change and performance programs. So I'm really delighted to say hello to Jamil. Hello. Thank you very much, Geeta. Thank you indeed. And hello to everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your day. Um, I'm a psychologist, I am a performance coach, uh, and I'm very lucky. Um, I get the chance to work with some very good business teams and some very good sports teams. Um, and I guess what I do is I help people cultivate a mindset for success. Uh, so I say that for us to act differently, we need to think differently. For us to create different behaviours, um, it's all about creating different mindsets to start with. Um, so I spend my time, or certainly spent my time when the world, world was normal, and things were sane at how I was uh, wandering around the world and um, talking to teams about that very matter. Um, this year I've been supporting a number of teams on a retained basis in several companies, um, I guess helping them with leadership in a new context. Um, how do we put our teams together and maximise the potential to, to allow our teams to perform at their optimum in a changing world? Um, and that's what we're talking about a little bit today. Um, I know that we haven't got long um, and I know there's going to be a little Q&A afterwards. We'll be delighted to hear from you. Um, it's one of those tricky afternoon sessions where all I can see is initials. I quite like it when people have got their cameras on. I can see into their home as I talk. At home, I'm a very nosy speaker. Um, but hey, look, let's get on with it. At home, one of the things that people always ask me is, um, what is success? And I get that asked quite a lot, actually. What is success? I always say that success is about making the connection between two um, things previously unconnected. That's my definition of success. Make the connection between two things previously unconnected. It's usually two ideas coming together, uh, which allow success to take place or two people coming together, arguing, debating, sharing, uh, allowing knowledge to flow and uh, to create something which is bigger and better than what they could create on their own. Um, that's usually where success comes from. So my great believer in connectivity. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but the more that we've been asked to stay apart and the more I've realized we need to be together. Um, I'm a massive believer in connectivity and knowledge sharing, and I believe the future of teams is all about that. So I always believe that communities outperform bureaucracies and hierarchies when it comes to maximizing human talent. Um, and there's lots of uh, examples of that at the moment. Um, so maybe we shouldn't look at our teams uh, as teams or organizations um, or institutions. Maybe we should look at them as communities, a community with a purpose. And I always say that purpose maximization will always drive profit maximization. So the more purposeful we can become at the moment, the more successful we can become. And many organizations I'm working with at the moment are taking a viewpoint that it's first things first, second things never. Um, let's really concentrate on the things that really make an impact. Um, and connecting in a way which allows knowledge to be shared to contextualize the world which is changing as fast as it is. Um, so I'm a firm believer that it is not a change that catches organizations out. It is the pace of change which catches organizations out. And you can't trust the future to anyone who champions the past. The future demands us to be different. And part of that difference is um, in knowledge sharing. Coming together, argue, debate, share, to create things which are bigger and better than what we could create on our own. That's what it's about for me. Um, I did a lot of work at Hewlett Packard uh, last year. And Hewlett Packard um, had this internal narrative uh, one of the things they said was, um, if Hewlett Packard knew what Hewlett Packard knows, we would be three times more successful. And it's so, so true of any community, isn't it? So true of any organization, any team. Um, how many people on the call? Um, we've got lots of people on the call, hundreds of people on the call. Um, can you imagine if we could take what's in your heads now? Um, take your contacts, take your knowledge, your wisdom, your expertise, place it all on one table and all have access to it. Imagine how successful every single one of us would become. It'd be incredible. If knowledge could become a new asset class in any team or any community moving forwards, um, it really would be phenomenal. And I honestly believe that companies no longer compete against companies. 
I see that all the time at the moment across sectors. Company, companies no longer compete against companies, networks compete against networks. And you really are as strong as your network. Now there's an external narrative for whatever organization you are in at the moment on that one. There's also an internal narrative too. Um, I honestly believe that individuals will only be as strong as the partnerships and networks they can forge. Um, so we need to form better teams, be more connected and share more. Uh, I honestly believe that our only sustainable competitive advantage is to learn faster and better than your competitors. Um, but how do we do that if we're not um, sharing, connecting, arguing and debating? If we're genuinely working in isolation, fiefdoms of knowledge, working remotely, driving our own figures, driving our own accounts, driving our own clients or geographies, it can't happen. At so no one person knows the answer at the moment in this disrupted world. Um, and what we need to do is to form bottom-up diverse um, teams, collaborative teams, which allow us to be successful. Take the wisdom of many to contextualize the world, difference of opinion, become more inclusive with people who have diverse thought, and allow us to share, argue, and debate our way to betterment. That's what it's about for me. Um, some basic psychology in our sort of five minutes or so, which is left, at, uh, that we often think, and then we feel, and then we act. So this is how we work as human beings. This is how you work. So this is how your customers work, how your colleagues work. Um, it's how your children work, it's how your partners work. It's that we think, and then we feel, and then we act. Now, so often our actions or behaviors, uh, when we are in a team, is dependent upon how we feel. Um, that is dependent upon the precursor, which is the thoughts. So we think in words and we think in pictures. That's how we think. In regard to the words, we speak at a rate of 80 to 100 words a minute. Um, but our minds are like soil, whatever thought you plant will nourish and grow. This is why we need to be careful. So we think in a particular way, makes us feel a particular way, and then we act upon it. So if we want to drive different behaviors in our team at the moment, you can go straight to actions and tell people to be different. Uh, we do that all the time, don't we? tell people to be different. I say to our team members, you should be more collaborative. Does it work? No. You say to our team members, you should be more innovative. Come on guys, We've got half an hour, we'll do some innovation. Does it work? No. Tell our children to keep their rooms tidy. Does that one work? No. Tell ourselves to be different all the time, don't we? But that rarely works too. So it's not necessarily about working on behaviors which drive team performance, leadership frameworks and values on a wall really about changing the words and pictures in people's heads and drive a different feeling and a different action. So therefore what we need to do in turn to commit to better teamwork is not necessarily decide upon the behaviors, but really decide upon the thoughts. And then how do we change new uh, perspectives? How do we change perspectives to allow us new possibilities and new opportunities? I honestly believe that intelligence and facts are no longer as useful as they used to be. I think attitude is more important than intelligence or facts. High technical expertise is no longer as valuable as it used to be. And I'm sorry to tell you that guys, but it's true. High technical expertise is no longer as valuable as it used to be. And do you know why? Because we can Google things, that's why. So where's gonna be, where's the differentiator between you and your um, traditional competition in a world which is moving as fast as it is? In regard to your team, it's not in what they know. It's how they think about what they know, which makes the difference. And in a world as disrupted as this, I would always take I will over IQ. I'd always have a team of people who choose to come together to create something which is bigger and better than what they could create on their own, and, uh, rather than people who had technical knowledge, who tried to play their way out of this by relying on their speciality. So I guess that as we come to uh, form better communities, as we come to form um, better ways of playing into each other and uh, new networks. I guess that we need to change what we believe to be true. There's never been a better time for organizations and individuals to challenge what they believe to be true. And um, so um, we all have a particular viewpoint on the market, we have a viewpoint on the economy, we have a viewpoint on our customers, we have a viewpoint on ourselves, we have a viewpoint on our technologies. And, uh, whatever we believe to be true in all these areas probably is not. And the problem is that we will always prove ourselves right, even when we're wrong. So I guess that as we become more open-minded, more agile in our thinking, start to question and challenge and become more curious about the world in which we're now living. And I guess that we can see new possibilities and new opportunities. The assumptions that this world is built upon, and in fact many of our businesses have been roundly challenged, prove maybe not to be true. 
So if we continue as a team of people to define ourselves by what we sell, rather than what our clients value, how can we ever become future literate or future relevant as a team? There's a big difference between what we sell as an organization, or it's a team of people, a leadership team, and an even bigger difference between what our customers value. For us to be future relevant or future literate, for our team to move in a purposeful direction, our team to get home together and share more, connect more and argue more, we decide upon the value that we're seeking to create for others in a world which is moving as fast as it is. Um, I've got a nine o'clock, it says 3.15 for me. At, um, I've probably done it 14 minutes or so. At, um, I'd like to think there's some provocation in there at, um, as much as uh, takeaways, because I know that you're going to hear some fabulous speakers today. Um, and I know that we've got some time for Q&A. Um, so I hope there's a little bit of challenge and provocation, which may prompt some questions more so than give some answers to you. I thank you so much for your time so far. Thank you very much indeed, Gita.